everybody, and welcome to Rikers Island ICND 1 100-105 training course. This course is going to be the first of many courses that you'll find here on RikersIslandTraining.com. The purpose behind the ICD1 training course is to start off with the basics and work our way up. The reason why I decided to start with a entry level certification and not focus on something high level like what I'm currently studying for, like the CCA service provider exam, is because of the fact that majority of people that are looking for training material are not looking for CCIE. Most of the time, people are looking for entry level, ICND1, your CCENT, your CCNA, that type of thing. So rather than go out there and say, okay, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and create a training course that is going to benefit me, I said, you know what, I can put what I'm doing on hold, do a course for you guys to benefit you all and leverage the training and expertise in my networking experience to help you guys out. So this training course is geared to help not only the entry level engineer, whether you've got two weeks in the field or you've been doing it for 10 years. I don't really care how long you've been in the field. My goal here is to teach you the technologies because regardless of how long you've been in the field, you may or may not have followed the blueprint. Cisco lays out a blueprint for all of their training material. And so what we're gonna do is, as we get through this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what is on the blueprint. I'll take you, I'll redirect you over to Cisco's website and show you how to navigate to the blueprint so you guys can download it and review it and keep it as a, um, as a rolling schedule, if you will, of material, material you need to cover. So the reason I say it doesn't really make a difference to me where, where you are certification-wise is because of the fact that if I was to gear it towards the person that's been doing it for 10 years, that really wouldn't benefit someone that's brand new to the industry. So I geared it to someone that's new to the industry with respect to the type of certification exam it is. So I've built it out for that particular reason. And I make mention of that a couple times because... There's, at least in my experience, there are times when I walk into an environment and I feel like a CCENT. And, you know, it's not because I don't know the technology, it's I don't know the environment. So I don't know the network, I don't know the backstory, things like that. So even people like myself, we end up walking into a network and we're like, whoa, what have you got going on? So that's the reason I geared it the way that I did. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the actual meat and potatoes of how this works. So the first thing you're going to learn about is me. I'm your instructor. Now, who am I? Well, my name is Rob Riker, and I am a CCIE in routing and switching. I also hold a CCMP in service provider, a CCNA in security and wireless, and I hold a VCA and VCP in data center virtualization in vSphere 5 and 6. Now, as we go progress through all of our points on the blueprint, which we'll be covering in the next slide, we will be focusing on the details Per, uh, surrounding the routing and switching track, which is what some people like to call, and I actually have to agree with them, the CCNA vanilla track, or the, the Cisco vanilla track, because this is going to be the core foundational understanding that I think every engineer should have. Most engineers that I know have a CCNA, maybe a CCNP. Whether or not they stay in the route switch track, that's up to them. I personally went through to the end of it because one, I wanted to be really good in routing and switching, and I feel like I'm pretty pretty good at it. The other part of it is everything else that you connect into the network, whether it's security, service provider, wireless, data center, what have you, all of those additional specialization tracks, they all, in one way or another, connect back into the main trunk of the network. So they all have to connect back into the regular LAN and SAN, uh, LAN WAN, which is what we're going to be focusing on. So that's going to be the key reason why I focused on route switch as the main track. I've got some specializations that I've gone out there because of the fact that I think those technologies are cool. But at the end of the day, they still come out to be me knowing a, a lot about a lot. Or some people might say the more you, the more you spend, the more time you spend in the industry, the more uh, the less you uh, realize you know, which is a very true statement. So the longer you're in the field, the less you feel like you actually know how to do. With that being said, don't let any of the exam blueprints, don't let any of the topics scare you. There's no reason to fear what it is you're going after. I would say don't fear it, respect it. Take the time to actually go through the material and learn it. 
you want to learn the material in a respect that you can go into any exam and not be not be flustered. When I went and sat for the CCIE lab exam, that is probably the most difficult exam I've ever sat through. And I had to sit through it three different times before I was able to successfully pass it. It is a very difficult exam. Truth be told, I was as nervous on my third attempt taking that exam as I was my first time taking the CCENT exam four and a half years earlier. The exam, no matter how much you prepare for it, is going to be scary. It doesn't matter how well you know the technologies. If it's your first time sitting for the test, it's going to be scary. Your best bet, and my recommendation to you, is to, if you know the technologies and you're comfortable with the technologies, that is going to put you at ease or make it easier for you to be able to sift through all the information that they're throwing at you and be able to come out on top. Now, I'll give you guys a little bit of exam uh, strategy towards the end of this video, but I wanted to focus on the actual exam itself before I went through and talked about exam strategy. So for those of you that are new to Rutgers Island Training, I would like to welcome you and thank you for stopping by. It means a lot to me to have you here. There's been a lot of thought and effort that has gone into Rikers Island. Rikers Island has always been and will always be a work in progress. So there will be additional courses, additional materials available to you as you progress. And that is the reason why I went with the subscription-based service. Because I did not want to push anybody into a, you have to buy it before you can get access to it. I wanted to, to allow you every potential possible way you need, may need to gain access to the material, There, it's yours to be able to do. That's That was my goal. So that is the reason why you can stream it through a, a subscription service. That is why you can go through and download the videos for a set fee, or you can download individual videos if you don't need to, um, if you want to go out and buy them individually or in blocks of 10, Whatever works for you. I personally, it does not matter to me how you do it. As long as you get the material, material you need to go through there. Now, for those of you that would like to get a hold of me or would like to communicate with me, obviously you can use any of the contact methods you see on RikersIslandTraining.com's website, or you can feel free to reach out to me at rriker at RikersIslandTraining.com. That comes directly to me, and I will be more than happy to answer any questions I can that you might throw my way. I welcome feedback. If there's something you would like to see, please do not hesitate to throw that out at me because I only will cover material that I think is relevant. And if there's something that you would like to see covered, by all means, throw it out there. You can also connect with me at on uh, Twitter at Riker Rob. I am more than happy to uh, follow you back if you are following me. And if you would like to connect with me, feel free to do so. And um, if you are looking to uh, connect, just say that you're a friend of mine and be good to go. That's all you have to say. Um, if, I, if you are coming to me as a recruiter, I will not connect with you. That is just my, I do not connect with recruiters anymore. If you are an engineer, an instructor, or uh, a technology person in any shape, fashion, or form that does not recruit people, I will be more than happy to connect with you. Now, for those of you that are interested in knowing, these are the certifications that I currently hold. I just felt like that they needed to be there. It, screen filler for more, more, uh, more than anything else. So let's get to the meat and potatoes now that we've talked for about 10 minutes about what it is that, who I am, what you can expect from Rikers Island, and moving forward. So let's actually focus on the ICD-1 exam. Now, what is the ICD-1 exam? Well, the ICD-1 exam is a test for candidates' knowledge and skills related to network fundamentals, land switching technologies, routing technologies, infrastructure services, and infrastructure maintenance. Long story short, they're going to test you on a lot of things. But at the end of the day, your goal, should you choose to, uh, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to simply go through the blueprint. The blueprint does a very good job of covering the material, or covering the concepts that they're going to be covered, that they want you to test on. So as we go through and hit a lot of these things, you're going to see the videos that I've recorded. I have labeled them according to the particular aspect in the a blueprint that you need to follow along with. So I went through and I covered the material. I didn't go super deep and I didn't go super light. There were some areas where I had to go deeper simply for the fact that you need that I have to presume that you don't have a fundamental background on a lot of these topics. 
So I have to go a little... It, it sounds very rudimentary when I'm talking. It sounds like there's not a whole lot to this stuff. But I'm giving you the same level of depth I would be giving to a CCIE candidate. And the reason for that is because I want you to have the base foundation. If you don't have the base foundation, it really doesn't make a difference how many certifications you have or how long you spend studying for it. If you don't understand the material, material you are uh, watching or reading or labbing on, then what, uh, what other recourse do you have? So spend the time going through that. I give you contact information in case you would like to reach out to me and you have a question, stuff like that. Feel free to. That's why I put it out there. Now, as we're going through, there's a couple of things we need to focus on that are going to be uh, details that we're going to need to cover. So the first thing is going to be network fundamentals. I've actually copy and pasted the major bullet points out of the blueprint and copied them into the slide so that you and I can go over them one by one. So just to give everybody a high-level overview. So when it comes to network fundamentals, this is going to be IP and TCP and UDP and network operations as a whole. So what do I mean by that, operations? Well, this is going to be how data just forged through the network. Simple as that. Because at the end of the day, if you don't understand how a MAC address is propagated or how an IP address works or where in the OSI model the Layer 3 router is going to fit into play, those are things that you're going to need to know. Because like I said, I can't presume that you already know this stuff. So I give you the bare bones, this is what's up, and this is how it works. Because this way here, at least you're going to be fundamentally uh, set up to understand what it is that I'm talking about. Whether you have come from a Network Plus background, you might be a, you know, a CCMP in voice, and just not that good in network operations. You know, you might know how voice protocols work, but you might not know how, how a switch operates. You know, if that's the case, great. Truth be told, is one of the things that I do whenever I'm starting a new track is whether it's service provider or data center or what have you, I always, even being a CCIE, I always start at the very bottom of the track and work my way up. I never assume that I already have a gifted level of understanding. The reason I put it is gifted is because I don't want to come in at like CCMP data center or CCMP security and start going forward. You might say, well, how come? Well, simple, because I don't want to have a preconceived notion that I know more than I don't. So I would rather spend a month or two going through a associate level blueprint, making sure that I understand what is a given technology, how does it work, where would it fit in the, in the mix? Spend a month or two going through CCNA security or CCNA data center. The reason why is because you're getting a base level understanding. That to me is where you can build off of that. If you don't already have a foundation, it's going to be very hard to build walls and a roof and start running plumbing and electrical and all other stuff in your house. Your house, your certification is a house. And if you can see the ground that you built on, well, unfortunately, that's not going to be a very stable house. People are going to be able to poke holes in your understanding, and you might think you understand how something works, but in reality, you may not. So starting off at the bottom, to me, is the most important. So network fundamentals is where we start. As we go through, we get out of network fundamentals. This is after we've covered IP subnetting, we've covered IPv6, we've covered TCP, IP, and UDP, and things like that. Then we get into LAN switching fundamentals. We talk about what a switch is. What is Ethernet? How does that work? How would you connect everything together? And this is going to fall back to, you've already learned what network architecture is. You know what cables are. You know what an Ethernet jack is. You know what an LC to SC connection is. You know these things now. So now you can start building off of them. Okay, where in the network would I place a layer 3 distribution switch? And why? Because that's going to be just as important. Because whether or not you've been doing this for 10 years or you're brand new, you might have to go up to a person in management or in leadership and try to explain to somebody that might not be technical why you need to do something in the network the way you're doing it. If you can't articulate to that person a reason why, they may or may not give you the okay to go do it. They might say, you know what, I think you need a little bit more research. Or like, okay, cool. A lot of times I spend majority of my time going through designs and making sure that I understand exactly what it is that the project requires of me before I even jump on the command line to do anything. So land switching fundamentals, we're going to focus on that. We're going to get into the details of what are VLANs, what are trunks, 
The reason why is because you want to understand the base foundational setup for a layer two infrastructure. The reason why is because switching is going to be something that you're going to see a lot of in your industry. There's going to be switching in the data center. There's going to be switching in the, in the uh, security areas. There's going to be switching in the core. There's going to be switching in the service provider. There's going to be switching in the, uh, the wireless infrastructure. They're switching everywhere because wherever there's a MAC address, there lives a switch. Now, how that switch operates depends on the platform you're on. That can vary from location to location and network to network. But we're going to focus on that. We're going to also take a look at VTP. There's a couple of technologies that I talk about in, in very high level detail that are not on the blueprint just to point, uh, plant that seed ahead of time. Like I talk about VTP, VLAN trunking protocol. It's not on the CCNA or ICND1 blueprint, but I talk about it anyway. I talk about VRFs, virtual routing and forwarding tables. They're not on the blueprint, but I talk about it anyway, because it's a way that the same thing with a VLAN to a switch is a VRF to a router. I put correlation to something so you understand it. Now, as we go through and we talk about LAN switching, we get the infrastructure set up. We go through, we create VLANs, we create trunks, we go ahead and we route, we do a little bit of inter VLAN routing, we do some router on a stick, get some of that cool stuff, and then, because technically that doesn't require a routing protocol or a static route, we get into routing fundamentals. We get into what is a route? How do you route? Why would you route? Things like that. And as we're going through, we need to focus on the details of how the routing table is built. What are the components of a routing table? How do you interpret the output from a routing table? And then as we go through, if you have multiple protocols running, how do you choose one over the other, one after the one over the other? Excuse me. So you have multiple pieces that you need to focus on. Now we then we get into static routing with IPv4 and IPv6. I recommend that if you are new to the new to networking, that you focus on both IPv4 and IPv6 at the same time. Because by the time you get to a CCNP or a CCIE preparation level, you're already going to be comfortable with it. Routing, then we get into RIP version 2. Yes, RIP version 2. The reason why is because it's on the blueprint and you might be tested on it. How much? Couldn't tell you. Does it matter? Not really. You should still know it. The reason why? Because I can't guarantee that everybody that's going to be watching this video or this, this course is going to be working in the enterprise. You might be working for a small to medium sized business with I, what I like to call prosumer gear, which means you're not running Cisco, you're not running Juniper. You might be running a a, uh, a level below that. Cisco's got a uh, product line called the SMB, the small to medium sized business switching line, where it's iOS code, but on a uh, with a limited feature set. So it's not full iOS code like you'd see on a ASR 9000 router, which is what you'd see in a service provider, but it's still got some functionality there that you would be able to benefit. That is where I come into play and I start explaining to you why that might be. Or you might be working on something like Netgear or D-Link. I don't know what you're going to be touching. The reason why that I covered material like that is because D-Link and Netgear both support RIP. So it's better to know what it is and know how it operates than not have a clue as to what you're looking at. Because there are times when I work, work, when I'm consulting, that I have a small to medium sized business and I still have to go in as a CCIE, go in and work on RIP environments. They might only have a few devices. I go in there. It's really not that hard to do because you understand it. Starting off with the base, working on ICD1, knowing how RIP works, and then moving on, it's, a good, it's good stuff when you start getting into it. The next one we're going to talk about once we have reachability across the network. And then that's the whole purpose before I get into... Uh, infrastructure services is when you're focusing on getting routing working, that means that you understand how IP works. You understand how TCP works. You understand how frame and IP forwarding operations work. So then you're able to get into LAN switching. You're able to switch the frames between the switches or the switch ports and things like that. Be able to get the routers to talk to each other. And then once you get beyond that, you're able to route between locations and sites. So that gives you that level of flexibility. So then you take that to the next level, and then you're getting end-to-end -end reachability, which is what routing is all about. At this point, you're at the point at, at where I would start breaking out services. Services are going to include, but aren't going to be limited to, DHCP, DNS, uh, NTP, uh, NAT, and ACLs. Now, when we talk about this, 
These are the core foundational protocols you're going to need to know about. ARP is down at layer two, but it still has it still has its uh, roots in layer two and layer three. So when we talk about things like NAT and ACLs, you have to be able to know how to filter traffic with an ACL, but also match that ACL and a NAT translation so you know which networks you can actually NAT to the internet. We take a look at how that will come into play. And then we talk about DNS and DHCP. The two go hand in hand. When we were going through Packet Tracer, one of the things that I realized through Packet Tracer was the limitation of capabilities on it. I knew there was going to be some, so I sh uh, routinely I add in some physical gear that I have here at home. I have an all Cisco environment that I run, uh, router switches, firewalls, access points, the whole the whole nine yards, and stuff like that. And I walk you guys through how to do some things, show you guys some advanced capabilities that are not able to be done in Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is a great tool because it allows you to play with the technologies in an application and still be able to see what's going on. If you didn't have Packet Tracer, it would be very difficult for anyone, in my opinion, to study these material, these technologies. And then once we get through the services and stuff like that, then it's onto infrastructure maintenance. Infrastructure maintenance is going to be where I spend the majority of my time. It is very rare for anyone to spend all day implementing things. Unless you're a consultant and you have a lot of deployment projects or, or, your, or your main job uh, description has entitled implementation engineer, where all you do is deploy things. If that's the case, then so be it. But a lot of times I am brought in to do design work. I'm brought in to look at for network optimization, network troubleshooting. Why is this thing going slow at this point in time of the day? Things like that. I, I am brought in to look at things in the network that aren't obvious. So the network is already typically running and operational by the time I get there. And I had to figure out why things are going slow in different areas. That makes my job more difficult, but it also makes it more rewarding when I go and say, oh, see, you've got too much delay between this endpoint and this endpoint because it's got to go this way around the block. Instead of going two hops, it's got to go six hops. And that adds that little bit of delay, the transit traffic, the transit time is what's going to slow your application down. Being able to pinpoint those problems are what it is that I most of the time do. So I'm, troublesho I'm troubleshooting things, resolving pain points, things like that. And those are all things you would be able to do to having gone through this course and knowing what it is you're looking at. And that is a big thing. Now with infrastructure maintenance, you're looking at things like how do I update the code? How do I update the iOS images? How do I maintain the, the images so that if a box fails, how do I get an, another replacement device up and running very quickly? How do I manage the device? Is there a way for me to have a backup copy and things like that? These are all details that we were going to cover. I even go through and talk about how you we blow away the operating system on the Packet Tracer router and I end up recovering it, showing you guys how to do that. It's actually relatively straightforward. It did take me a little bit to figure out how to actually go through because it, it had been such a long time. I cut the part of the video out where I struggled. Just so I could, you didn't have to sit there and wait seven, eight, nine minutes for me to figure out what the commands were. And then as soon as you see it break, uh, like a second later, it, fl it fails over. And then you can see it, uh, me typing the right commands and then it popping right up. So these are things that I went through and made sure that I covered because it's not usually covered. You know, people will talk about how Armon works or Ramon works or how we're covering it uh, devices and they're just describing if uh, describing the, the procedure I actually watch you through it so in case there was a problem you would know how to fix it so these are things that you got to keep in the back of your mind as you're going forward so thank you so much for your time and your patience there is one less one thing I have left to do and that is to take you out to Cisco's website to take a look at the uh, ICD one blueprint so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the Cisco docs here. I pull this guy over, and we're going to look at it like this. So on this, this is the landing page. If you ever decide to go after CCIE, this is the landing page you're going to get if you click on the documentation tab. So from here, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the uh, down here. We're going to click on training events, CCENT. 
Or you can type in, uh, I believe it is cisco.com forward slash go forward slash forward slash ccent, and that would direct you to that as well. So this is going to get you to the landing page for ccent. Now, there are no prerequisites for this exam, so anybody, regardless of who you are, can go ahead and get started with it. So this is one of those things that is re really nice about here. And I would recommend if you go through and study material, you can click around here and take a look at what they've got. There are some stuff you can buy through um, through the Cisco Live or Cisco Learning Network are pretty good. But I've got it all compiled in one location and it's it streams 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So there you go, folks. Again, my name is Rob. It's been an absolute pleasure and a privilege for me to sit here and explain to you what it is that we do here at Rikers Island. And as we're going forward, I hope that you will feel the same and hang, come hang out with us. There are more products and more material on the roadmap and coming out here very soon. If you have a suggestion or anything like that, please feel free to hit the, the contact us page and let me know. You know, say, hey, Rob, I'd love to see a video on this, or I'm, I've got a project coming up, and this is what we're looking at doing. What can you tell me? And I will be more than happy to add in whatever information I think is valuable to you. But until next time, guys, thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. And until next time, take it easy.